Hello everyone. Welcome to the eCyberMission Classroom. My name is Matt Hartman and I'll be your instructor for this lesson. Today, we'll be looking at drawing conclusions. In order to do so though, we must first review what a conclusion is and compare it to an inference. Take a look at student sheet 7-1. At the top, you'll see the definitions of conclusion and inference. As you can see, an inference is an idea suggested by the facts or details in a passage, and a conclusion is a decision about what may happen or about the result an event may have. These two things are very similar, but they are not the same. One is an idea that's being suggested, and one is a decision about what will happen because of something else. A result, as the definition says. Take a look at examples one and two. In example one, we were inferring information about the woman and drawing a conclusion about what will happen. In example two, we are inferring information about the temperature, and then we may be able to draw a conclusion about what will happen next. Now that you've reviewed what these two words mean, it's time to try it out and see if you can make some inferences or draw some conclusions. Complete practice activities on student sheet 7-1 now. Pause the video while you do so. Hello again. Let's take a look at the activities you tried. For question one, you should have chosen answer C. For number two, you should have selected the second option. And for number three, the best choice is the first one. Then you went on to draw some conclusions using data. For the first graph, you were shown information about temperatures in the late afternoon. You should have concluded that if there is more development, then the temperature will be higher in the late afternoon. For the second graph, you were looking at a bar graph for pollen production in different years. You should have concluded that as the years go by, the pollen count gets higher. In the third graph, you saw maximum daily ozone amounts at maximum temperatures. You should have concluded that in New York, there is more ozone than in Atlanta. And in the final graph, you see temperature anomalies over years. You should have concluded that as the years go by, the temperature anomalies become greater. So now that you've looked at some inferences and conclusions and come up with ones yourself, let's take a look at some more data. What can you conclude about these students based on the above data? Can you draw any conclusions about boys versus girls? Why or why not? Can you draw a fair conclusion about Jake and Maggie? So what are some conclusions you can reach about these students? Well, you might say that Maggie scores higher on math tests than Jake. Can you make conclusions about boys versus girls? Well, probably not. Since you only have one boy and one girl, your sample size is too small. If you were to form conclusions about boys and girls based on this limited data, it may not be correct. Can you draw a fair conclusion about Maggie and Jake? You might be able to say that Jake scores lower than Maggie on math tests. But maybe not, since we have such a small sample size. Let's take a look at the next four tests. With this additional data, what can you now conclude about Jake and Maggie? What may have caused Jake to have done so poorly at the beginning of the year and then become an A student? Let's go to our Army scientist, who will talk to you a little bit more about this problem. The first two tests had been a review of the skills learned in fifth grade. The rest of the tests were based on new material the teacher taught during class. What might you infer about Jake and Maggie based on this information? Is there a way to prove your inference? What would you need to do to make a conclusion about boys and girls' abilities in math? Extension question. One student who looked at the data said Jake has problems with his long-term memory. Another student argued, no way. Jake just hadn't gotten used to waking up for school and was just tired the first few weeks of school. Can they make these conclusions? Are they based on facts or opinions? How could they test their ideas? So now, what conclusions can you draw about Jake and Maggie? Do you see how new information changes the conclusions that can be drawn? Knowing about what was covered on the tests can help you make inferences about Jake and Maggie. Is there any way to prove them? And what would you need to do to make a conclusion about girls' and boys' abilities in math? Finally, 
Think about the extension question. What do you think? Drawing conclusions is a very important step in science and research. It allows you to come up with an answer about what happened in your experiment. Oftentimes in research, and in biological research in particular, your results may be something that you are not anticipating or expecting. In order to make sense of these results, it is very important to take a while and try to understand what happened in your experiment, where any potential problems may have occurred, and how you can improve your experiment the next time you try it. Even though drawing conclusions happens at the end of your experiment, I think of it as the very first step in planning a new experiment because it gives you an understanding of what you need to change or make better the second or third time around. Drawing conclusions not only allows you to try to make sense of your research, but a good conclusion will give you a starting point of where to go next, whether it's repeating the experiment again or changing a variable for the next experiment. Oftentimes I feel as though conclusions are overthought. When drawing a conclusion, don't feel that you have to come up with a complicated answer about your work. Experiments will fail. That's just how science is. However, it's the ability to create a good conclusion so you can understand why it fails. That makes you a good scientist. That way, the next time you try your experiment, you hopefully will have better luck with the results. Now back to your East Cyber Mission teacher. Now it's time to take these ideas and use them with the work you've done so far. Take a look at the data that you've gathered in your tests on your eCyber Mission project. Analyze the data and see if you can draw any conclusions from them. When you're done, figure out if maybe you need more data, and if so, how you could get that data. Then it's time to move on to the next and final lesson, benefit to the community. Remember, if you have any questions or problems, talk to your team advisor. If there are still questions, you can contact CyberGuides on the forums at eCyberMission.com or call Mission Control between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday at 1-866-GO-CYBER. See you soon.